Hey, Bruce Taylor here, Frugal Tech. It's time for me to upgrade my system for video editing. Now, currently I use a 2014 MacBook Pro and it's quite good, but I've been wanting something a little different. I don't really need a laptop like I thought I was going to when I bought this one. I never cared for the iMac and of course the Mac Pro uh, is seriously outdated and I'm sure when they do release new one it's going to be super expensive and of course the Mac Mini has been pretty much a joke up until the October the 30th when they announced the new Mac Mini and guess what that's what I'm going to go for. And so I just thought I would tell you a little bit about the system that I'm going to get. Now, first off, first order business, I should say, is that I will be selling my 2014 MacBook Pro. So let's get that out of the way. If you're interested, hit me up for details. It's like brand new, not a scratch on it. So the Mac Mini, what am I going to get? Well, I'm definitely going to get the 3.2 gigahertz Core i7, the six core CPU. I'm going to order it with the base level of RAM, the 8 gigabytes, but I'm going to get it with a 512 gig SSD. I believe I could save 200 bucks if I go with a 256, and I can probably make that work just fine if you're just strictly using it for video editing, which I intend to do. But the thing is, you know, it's permanently there. It's soldered to the computer motherboard, so maybe I should spend the extra 200 bucks. So all in without Apple Care, $14.99. By the way, I normally don't buy Apple Care unless it's a laptop. So just putting it out there. Now the RAM. Uh, I happen to be a big uh, fan of Crucial RAM. So I went to the Crucial website and found a 32 gig kit for $273. And I put that RAM in myself. Uh, it's not that complicated of a process to do that. So that's, uh, I think Apple wants like 600 bucks if you choose the 32 gig upgrade. Well, I'm going to pocket over half of that amount of money and do my own RAM upgrade. And 32 gigs will be more than enough for using Final Cut Pro. And then I use, uh, uh, let's see, I use Audacity for audio and a few plugins. Basically, that's what I'm going to be using it for. Very seldom do I use motion. The Mac Mini has one fundamental flaw, which is that they, they have no discrete graphics built in. You're using the HD 630 Intel discrete graphics. What am I going to do about that? Everybody says, oh, you know, get an eGPU. Well, these black magic things are just, in my opinion, horribly overpriced, non-upgradable. Screw that. <laughs> Go that way. But what I am going to get is the... Uh, Razer Core X uh, eGPU enclosure. Now, that's $300. What about the GPU? Glad you brought that up. Well, I just happen to own an RX 480, which is the Polaris architecture, and it is supported by Mojave. So I will put that uh, RX 480 with eight gigabytes of uh, RAM into the eGPU enclosure. Is it the Vegas 56? No. Vegas 64? No but it still will be plenty powerful enough to help expedite moving those graphics because some parts of Final Cut does use the GPU as opposed to the CPU. So I think I'll have a pretty fluid uh, experience with that. And if not, if it doesn't really cut the mustard, you know, it's upgradable, right? I can go ahead and pop out uh, the RX 480 and, and maybe get a Vega 56, but I think I'll be okay. With that, it ships with a 0.5 meter cable, all right? That is really, really close that you've got to set it next to the Mac Mini, too close for me. So I need a cable. I need a Thunderbolt 3 cable. I need one around two meters. And it's got to be an active cable. There's active and passive. Apparently, once you go over a half a meter, the bandwidth cuts down on the cable unless you get an active type. $50 for a two meter cable. I think it's going to be worth it as a long term investment because it'll allow me to put the eGPU wherever I want to. So now I have the Mac Mini configured just the way I want it. It's got the RAM, we've got the eGPU. And uh, what's next? Okay, so right now I have a South Korean a 27 inch 1440p display, and it does a pretty good job. I would love to have another ultra wide. I use one for my business and work on my PC all day on that ultra wide. And I'm ready for another one. 
and I found an LG, uh, this is the model, 34UC80-B for $549.99. So it's got 99% of the sRGB color space. It's IPS panel. It's curved. I don't know about that, but it looks to be a pretty solid wide, ultra wide for, you know, under 600 bucks. Keyboard. Well, I already have an Apple wireless keyboard, but it's getting up there. It's getting older. I have the Apple trackpad. So I think I'll go ahead and pop for a new keyboard. And because the computer is in slate gray, I don't know, maybe this is something I think is kind of neat looking. I may go for the Magic Keyboard in slate gray. It's $139 for it. So the grand total, if I get all in, is $2,811. That's the Mac Mini with 32 gigs of RAM, an eGPU with a RX 480. That's a 34-inch ultra-wide from LG and the Magic Keyboard for $139. Now I already got a nice uh, Logitech MX Master Mouse, so we're good all there. If I decide to pass on the monitor and keyboard and just use what I got, I'm in a 2122. And the performance of this is going to be remarkably close to the entry level iMac Pro, which is what, five grand <laughs> to get into that. So you can see that's just nutty to me. And then even with that, I would still have a display that I really don't. Yes, it's a gorgeous 5K display, but I really want an ultra wide. And, let me, and, and I think for a lot of people that do video editing, having that really wide area for your timeline is this like super important thing to do so i'm very very excited that apple finally because I've, I've been wanting to make a video about the mac mini not not just for clickbait titles or whatever it's a, i think a machine that i really really want and i think it'll do, and i love the fact that it's so small and takes up very little room and is quiet and we'll just sit there and do its thing so yeah i'm, I'm actually pretty stoked about getting in and i think for me, that's an exciting thing to do. I don't buy computers that often. <laughs> Ask my wife, she would tell you differently. But uh, I think in this case, and of course, the uh, as I said, the MacBook Pro I'm going to sell, as it turned out, really not doing the kind of traveling I thought I'd get to do. So a, a desktop is just fine for my purposes. And so that's it. Um, I look forward to your comments down below. What do you think? Any ideas, any suggestions? Let me know what you would do, how you would configure it or any alternatives to the things I just mentioned. Bruce Naylor, take care until the next one.